There are protocols to be observed in the presence of God and if you don't understand these protocols you will not be blessed in any meeting that God is present. I'll give you about five or six examples. Number one is Moses. There was a time Moses saw a burning bush and decided to approach the burning bush and as Moses approached the burning bush he heard a voice that spoke to him and said take off your shoes or your sandals for the ground or the place you are standing is a holy ground ah so God was teaching Moses that there is a certain attitude and protocol concerning the holiness that I am and he was telling him that where you are standing now is a holy ground why was it a holy ground because it was a normal bush that everybody has been passing there but when God's presence came there guess what guess what the place became holy and Moses attitude for that presence was to take off his shoes are you getting this protocol which means that this ground you see this place was a bare land but it was constructed to be a temple that was going to house the house of God and once God's presence was officially invited here this ground is now what holy so just like Moses' attitude had to change, your attitude has to change. The second example is that of the priests of the Old Testament. You will notice that the priests had certain protocols of how they were supposed to act around the tabernacle. God gave them dimensions, specifications on how they were supposed to construct the artifacts in the tabernacle how they were supposed to offer the sacrifices and even give offerings who were supposed to do it even the ark of covenant was not supposed to be carried by everyone it was, you, you had to be a Levite and even after being a Levite you have to be a priest and even as a priest you have to be from the house of Korah Kohath. you have to be a Kohathite to be able to carry it that's why when Uzzah touched it he was struck dead so even the priesthood system had principles had, had protocols surrounding it which means that we need to understand the protocol system of the sanctuary of God they had spoons that were anointed utensils, bowls items and how they were supposed to use it there was a time God would tell them kill a bullock when he says kill a bullock you can't kill a goat when you kill the bullock he says dip your finger into it anoint their thumb anoint their ears seven times why would God be doing these things these are protocols if they wanted to engage his presence and have an advantage the third example is the sons of Aaron Nadab and Abinadad in the book of Leviticus chapter 10 the verse 1 to 3, you'll be shocked that the Bible tells us they were supposed to burn incense with fire but the fire was supposed to come from God's prescription do you know what the, the mistake they did they were priests though they were the sons of Aaron and the Bible says when they were tendering the incense they took fire that was not prescribed it was called strange fire it was called unauthorized fire so they brought their own fire to fire incense to God once they lighted that fire they were struck dead by God you know why? because they didn't observe protocol third example is Saul Saul was a king he was not a priest in Israel there were three very important people the king, the priest and the prophet Saul was a king, he wasn't a prophet Saul was a king, he wasn't a priest and there was one day they were supposed to offer sacrifices and they were waiting for Samuel to come and give instructions on the sacrifice and the people were giving Saul pressure and Saul said listen hey, it doesn't matter hey the people have kept long so let me go ahead and Saul himself took the role of a priest and offered a sacrifice before Samuel came do you know what happened to him he lost his throne if you don't walk by the protocol systems of God you can lose fifth example is Uzzah when the ark of God entered into Jerusalem there was a man called Uzzah who saw that the ark that was placed on the cats the animals it was shaking it was about to fall and he decided that he was going to stop he was going to prevent God from falling without observing the protocol system of handling the ark and you'll be shocked to know that Uzzah was a son of Abinadab where the ark stayed for 40 years so he thought that he had familiarized familiarized with the ark We've been seeing the ark every day. We see the ark every day. So if the ark is going to fall, I'm the best person. I'm the best person to stop the ark. Do you know that Uzzah was a type of believers who are used to the worship services we have. They are used to their pastors. They are used to the pastor's teaching. They are used to the glory. They know the song Mr. Gosh is about to sing. And they can even start singing it before he sings it. They know from here we go here. From here we go here. So their mind has already stationed 
that this one, let's just do you know what is happening? You are getting familiar with the presence of God. And guess what? He touched the ark. He broke protocol. Struck. There's a time I read, and you notice that in 2 Samuel chapter 6 from the verse 11, David, when they took the ark from the house of Obedidom and they were coming, David began to dance until his kingly royal garment removed. And as he danced, do you know what they did also? After every six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, they will stop and kill an animal and sacrifice it to the Lord before they continue walking. So if the place was at Kaswa and they were walking to Kaswa from here, Hato to Kaswa, after every six steps, they offer sacrifice. When we look at to Kaswa, so you see, you see why David was a man after God's heart. The guy was special. So look at his attitude towards God's presence. He gave him sacrifices. He gave him a dance. Those of you don't dance in church. Until his wife began to spy him and his wife said, how can a king like you, look, a king like you and you are dancing until your dress is removing. Those of you who come to church and aspire what people are doing to the Lord and you are questioning them. I'm coming to you. Micah saw what his husband, the king was doing. He said, ah, you are disgracing me before the people. Do you know what happened to Mika? She never gave birth again. Can I shock you? David said, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me to king, to be king over your father. And I'm willing to debase and lower myself as long as I'm bringing glory to God. That's what David said. Can I shock you? One of the things that the presence of God hates is diplomacy. David was a king, but he cast away diplomacy aside when he was around the presence of God. Oh, this is serious you know some of you sometimes a worship meeting can be going on and you just sense like kneeling down but when you check the atmosphere on the ground people will say that I'm, I'm in the spirit too much when I kneel down me I don't like people to see my spirituality like that too. and I kneel down they all say hey I don't kneel down you hear the Holy Ghost telling you lie down then you are checking the floor there's no carpet here where can I lie lie in your bedroom <laughs> That's how you missed. You are too diplomatic. Even your tongues is diplomatic. Skesh keskus. Skesh keskus. Hele, hele, hakos. Hepo, hotter, hokopo. Holland, Holland, Holland. Mexico, hosa, hafiako. Diplomatic tongues. And something will arouse within you. God is telling you, flow in the tongues. Katamo, rakatata, But when you check it, what will they say? On kunkrachime. 